eminent Punjabi writer Amrita Pritam began her career as early in her life as when she was only 16 years old. Her unconventional views provoked her readers into thinking critically about the contemporary society of India and the Indian fraternity gave immediate recognition to her seminal collection of poems Sunehra, which was published in 1955. That made her the first woman recipient of the prestigious Sahitya Academy Award in the following year. In 1947, at the time of the partition, she moved to New Delhi, where she began to write in Hindi as opposed to Punjabi, her mother tongue. She was divorced in 1960 and since then her work has become more explicitly feminist, drawing on her unhappy marriage in many of her stories and poems. For her dedicated work as a woman of letters, she has received numerous honours from a variety of academic and cultural bodies. Today, Amrita Pritam remains a household name in Punjab. I'll begin with a very brief summary of the story, The Stench of Kerosene by Amrita Pritam. The, main, uh, the story is set in a very small village in rural India. The main characters of the story are Guleri, Manak and Manak's mother. Manak and Guleri have been married for over seven years and in spite of being married for so long, they do not have a child. Every year during the time of the harvest, Guleri goes back to her hometown Chamba to visit her family. So this particular time of the year when Guleri is away visiting her family in Chamba, Manak's mother, she looks for another woman for Manak because Guleri is unable to conceive a child and Manak's mother, she is very keen on having a grandchild. So Manak very obediently gets married to this new woman and Manak and his new wife, they have a son and his mother is very overwhelmed. Meanwhile in Chamba, when Guleri learns of this new marriage, she sets herself on fire by pouring kerosene on herself. After a few months, uh, Manak learns of this incident through his friend and uh, he gets very depressed and feels guilty. The story ends with Manak's dialogue, take him away, he stinks of kerosene. He says this when his son is placed in his lap. This is because he might be reminded of the fact that Guleri is no longer in the world and no longer in his life because he did not object to this new marriage, he did not stand for himself. So from the story we see that Amrita Pritam has thrown light on the injustices that women face in our country, specifically in the rural areas. Through many instances in the story, she has described the Indian culture and the typical Indian mentality. If we have a look at the husband-wife relationship in our society, we see that the mother-in-law, she always has some kind of interference in the relationship. This interference may always not be intentional, but whatever it is, it definitely has an impact on the relationship and, and not in a good way. Even in the story, the mother-in-law was the one taking decisions in the family. Manak was not even asked once if he was alright with the idea of a second marriage. He was sort of ordered to get married again by his mother. The second thing in the story which we see is that women after marriage, they are expected to be idle wives and idle daughter-in-laws. All what is expected from them is to do household work, to cook, to run after the husbands and mother-in-laws and of course most importantly to have children. Women are rejected if they do not have children, they are not able to have children or if they do not have a son. As we have been living in an Indian culture, we have seen or observed that often parents have the final say in a child's life. Even in a husband-wife relationship, the mother tries to put her wishes through them and this interference often causes problems in the relationship. In this story, this is evident from the fact that Manak married to another woman even though he loved Guleri just because his mother wanted him to marry as Guleri couldn't give birth to a child. Another example from this story that shows that Manak's mother had the prime voice in the house is that when Manak refuses Guleri from going to visit her parents, Guleri says to Manak that when your mother didn't refuse me, then why are you? Even after approximately of 65 years of independence, India is as a patriarchal society. Uh, women are often subjugated and oppressed even in marriage. Even after marriage, women have to leave their own household and adopt the 
husband's culture and religion. This can be seen from the fact that Guleri was allowed to see her parents only once a year, even though her parents lived just a few miles from her husband's house. In some societies, marriages that exist for show and without love, and the wife would say that I am not his wife, just someone he happened to marry. Education. The only one thing that can help a woman come above the low patriarchal minds of society is not being given to them because the family in root, mainly in the rural areas thinks that they have to supply a child's daughter who can fulfill the needs of the family of a future husband. But if the if the people themselves would have get gotten educated or would have the minds of the would have the mind, they would have known that education would help the women even in household work as they would have they could learn optimized way of doing some of the household activities such as they could also help they can also help in educating their children when they give birth to one which would help them in their education but uh, women uh, do not get educated in this in the Indian culture and even if they do, they, they are unable to get a job for themselves as the employer would also have the same mindset that women are not equal to men and would have mindset that women cannot perform as good as men do. Therefore, education, the only one thing as I previously mentioned that can help a woman uh, make her own status and get above society is being denied and this is a right that no one can steal. Amrita Pritam captures the whole of the value system developed on marriage in this social setting through the metaphor which clearly limits the night and dignity of women. However, Manak and Kuleri do not get carried away by the social setting but remain lovers. Guleri's father, prosperous and exposed to cosmopolitan atmospheres in cities, prevents her from being a commodity or rather a consumable in the state of corn by declining a bride price for his daughter. Considering him a worthy young man for a good family, he marries her to Manak free from a bride price. This non conformist gesture of her father does not change Manak's passivity and submissiveness when it comes especially to satisfying the expectations of his mother and the rest of his clan in Lakhmandi. Manak loves Guleri by all means. He tries his best to dissuade her from going to Chamba once he gets to know of his mother's plans. He does not succeed in this as he is compelled not to implicate his mother in the whole issue. In the episode where Manak takes Guleri halfway to Chamba, the interaction between the two shows that the nature Guleri is more expressive and vivid than Manak. She demonstrates more personality than Manak even in her naive perception of life and her strong determination to go to Chamba for the annual harvest festival. Therefore, it is Manak's fault that he does not tell Guleri directly what they are in, in for. Rather, he tries to stop her from going away. Manak's love for Guleri surfaces in her reaction to her death. In his heart, he starts burning in the fire where Guleri was reduced to a cinder. He gets haunted by the stench of kerosene which fueled Guleri's destruction. He starts imagining that a baby boy born to his second wife came up to the grave of Guleri. That is why he cannot tolerate the child in his lap. That is why he smells the child of a kerosene. For the rest of his life, he continues to suffer from the injustice caused by him to Guleri. This is all due to his love for Guleri. It is clear that Manak and Guleri both are victims in the same plight under the family institution run by Manak's mother. Manak has developed a very sophisticated structure for a short story. As the story progresses through a set of ironies from the beginning to the end, Pritam has carefully connected the major incidents by means of irony. In fact, the story begins with the invitation Guleri receives from home to the Harvest Festival in Chamba. The lovable mayor that comes to carry her to her father on this festive occasion needs to open the story. 
but it turns into a crying subject. Gulady's ignorance and Manak's intelligence of what is in store for them leads to an ideological conflict between them that culminates in their unwanted separation. Unable to reveal the secret resolve of his mother, Manak just speaks about Bush rather than enlightening Gulady on the reality. And unable to resist the temptation to, to go to a father's home, Gulady goes ahead with the invitation rather than comply with Manak's plea. Very unfortunately, neither of them strives to work out a solution to the problem created by Manak's mother, though they have, as husband and wife, the right to take any step for their well-being. Insensitive to her son's feelings, Manak's mother marries him to a second woman. When that is heard, Guleri commits suicide. Manak becomes a dead man on hearing Guleri's destiny. Even his own son, born to his second wife, cannot repair Manak's heart. Manak continues to dwell in the trauma of Guleri's horrible death. Freedom portrays Guleri and Manak as victims of navy and conformity. Using this situation, Freedom makes a powerful indictment of the Indian tradition of demanding every married woman to deliver a child to her in-laws. Where love, loyalty, care, concern on the part of the wife become immaterial. For the price they pay for the woman, she should bear a child by her husband. Amrita Pritam has selected a very special situation in an isolated community to mount her attack on this inhuman practice, but it functions for universal appeal for sympathy. Though Pritam is a strong feminist writer here, she, brought, she portrays how one woman engineers destruction of another woman in a situation where a man remains helpless and subject of matriarchal regime. 